Hello, you welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is John Thomas from England. I'm going to tell you about tutorials. I'll slow down now. Today we're talking about boomerangs. Why? Because a lot of you asked me on my Instagram how I make my boomerangs because they look and feel different from other people's boomerangs. Or when you try it yourself, it doesn't come out as smooth. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is a good boomerang. And here's an example of a bad boomerang. As I'm sure you can tell, they look and feel different even though they're using the same source video file. It's all got to do with the playback speed, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. The Good Boomerang uses a non-linear playback speed. It changes throughout the playback, obviously, and it's actually really easy to do that. Now, we're going to be using After Effects for this, and the reason I'm using After Effects is because it just gives you so much control over all the elements, all the aspects, all the parameters of your video file. Now, firstly, of course, you need a piece of video. I use a hyperlapse because I'm known to do hyperlapses. I'm really good at them. been doing them for about seven or eight years now. If you want to know how to do hyperlapse, you can check out this tutorial right here. I take you from beginning to end, everything you need to know how to shoot them handheld. It's really quite efficient. As I said, been doing this for a while, so you can trust me. You don't need a hyperlapse specifically. I know how challenging that can be. You can use any kind of video, but a hyperlapse just looks really cool. And then you can add some extra effects on there, which I'll talk about later. Now, you have your video file. You are going to open up After Effects. We're running. That's running. Now we got to record the screen. And we're only doing this for the fourth time because... Well, we ever made 800 videos. Open up your After Effects and import your video file. You can double click, hit Command I, go to File, Import, whatever. As long as you get that file in there. Create a composition with set file. Right click, go to Time, enable Time Remapping. And then it'll generate these two keyframes at the beginning and the end. Now if I drag this right keyframe all the way down to one second, the entire clip will only be played back between these two. Anything after this is a freeze frame. It's the same frame, so drag that all the way to the last frame and we'll zoom in a bit on that with plus. Make sure that that's all we need. Now, select these two keyframes because if you play it back now, it's the linear speed, which you can see in this graph here. That's a representation of the speed, playback speed. If you change this, right click keyframe assistant, easy ease on both these keyframes, obviously the shape changes. And also, this graph is no longer linear. So if we do a quick preview now, you'll notice that it plays back differently. Now, obviously, this clip stops here. What you do is hit Command D or just duplicate it. Right click on that second one, go to Time, Time Reverse Layer. And before you know it, if my computer would run properly, you have a very nice looking boomerang. Now, you can go into that graph editor and adjust the playback speed and the ramping, which is why we're using After Effects. But this pretty much just works really well. I find that a one second boomerang, so one second of the original, for the original clip to be duplicated and then do that again, because on Instagram, your minimum video length has to be three seconds. One second playback and then you loop it always works really well. And even with the standard settings of this graph, this curve, um, yeah, it just really works. So. Now you can just duplicate that again and make sure there's a one frame overlap between these clips. Otherwise it's going to play back to the end and then wait one frame because it's a double frame and it'll feel a bit weird. So if you play back now, you'll see how good that feels. But there's a difference between the bounce here and the bounce at the end there. So I think I make that one frame like that and then overlap. And I think that's going to feel better. Yeah. So it is a bit playing around. You can delete these two and then just duplicate those again and then overlap those. And then we should have, yeah, a very smooth boomerang. And then at the end there, you're going to trim to come to your work area and that's pretty much it. It really is as simple as that. Now you can make it even more interesting by, for example, keyframing your scale, which is what I did on this clip originally. So the one I posted on Instagram. So at the beginning and of the end, hit S to generate your scale keyframes, add that little diamond there. But first you gotta enable this uh, chrono icon. I'm doing this in the wrong order, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> Find the middle of your clip, which is right there. Smack that keyframe and then zoom in to say 
300% scale, hit preview, and then you get this really trippy zoom in and out effect, which people seem to really love on Instagram. And that's pretty much that. It really is that simple. Now you can kind of do this in Premiere as well with speed ramping, uh, but I'm, yeah, I like After Effects and I feel like more people should know After Effects. So if you have any questions about After Effects, if you want me to do an introduction to After Effects or how I use After Effects in my workflow, please let me know in the comments. If there are any other tutorials you'd like to see me do or videos, please let me know as well. Subscribe if you haven't already or I'll be very upset with you because you're still watching all the way at the end here. Uh, thank you and also I apologize about the way this looks or I guess this looks because I'm looking at that. It's a little uh, tricky setup but I just couldn't be bothered setting up the big lights. And there you have it. See you guys very soon. Peace.